We have two monster regions that have rotated into Earth view, and they've been rapid firing flares and solar storms. And one of those storms is Earth directed. How will this affect you? Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather this week has definitely kicking into high gear. You can see monster regions 2740 and 2741 rotating into Earth view. Now these regions have been creating havoc on the sun's backside, launching solar flares and solar storms. And now as they're rotating Earth's side, nothing seems to be slowing them down. You can see the solar flares going off like little paparazzi bulbs, pop, 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 pop. And they continue to be firing and they continue to fire solar storms as well well as solar flares. In fact, one of the solar flares was almost an M-class flare. And now these regions are rotating into the Earth strike zone. And sure enough, one of the solar storms that's been launched is now part Earth directed. So we could see some activity, including Aurora down to mid latitudes later on this week. Now these regions will be with us easily over the next week, maybe two weeks before they disappear off of the sun's west limb. And they are boosting the solar flux up. We we are back into almost the 80s for solar flux, which means decent radio propagation on Earth's day side, especially for us being at near solar minimum. So enjoy this amateur radio operators and aurora photographers. You definitely have something to look forward to. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see the X-ray flux was reasonably quiet until about the third, and you can start seeing it ramping up. That's when region 2740 and then slowly 2741 rotated into Earth view, and as that X-ray flux ramps up, so does the solar flux. We're now back into the high 70s, almost 80s for solar flux on Earth's day side, and that's a good boost to amateur radio and emergency responders. You guys are enjoying some decent radio propagation right now. But while long comes with it are all these flares. See the pop, 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 pop. In fact, back on the 6th, we got a near M-class flare from one of these regions, and this is causing a lot of noise on the bands, and it also may be disrupting GPS reception just a little bit here and there. So expect to contend with this easily over the next week before things begin to calm down, and it may even last another 10 days or so before things finally calm down as these regions rotate to the sun's backside. And as we take a closer look at the activity, back on the 6th, you can see we had a, almost an M-class flare being launched from region 2740. And as we turn around and we look at the difference images, you can see the strength and power of that region and that eruption by that huge wave that goes whoosh right over the surface of the sun like that. So these storms and these flares are pretty strong. Now on the 7th, just one day later, we have yet another eruption. And if you take a look at the difference images here, you can see that hot loop Leaving and all that dark stuff being evacuated. This is a solar storm that's been launched just to the east of Earth, probably going northeast. It might graze us, but probably not. But easily, as we continue to have these solar storms being launched almost once a day, the very good chance that we're going to get hit with an Earth-directed solar storm within the next week. And sure enough, that recent solar storm that looked like it was launched northeast of us actually does have an earthward directed component. We got some new coronagraph data in that actually does show us that there's a little bit of a halo. So as we switch to our prediction model, Enlil, this is NOAA's version of the model, the top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity, you can see, bam, 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 look at all of those solar storms that were being launched to the east of us. And then we've got this last one here that's been launched and it's earth directed. Now these, these types of predictions are kind of hard to make considering there's so many solar storms out there they're kind of camouflaging one another but our best prediction is that we're going to get hit right around the 11th probably midday to a little bit in the afternoon on the 11th and this storm might be large enough to bring us some aurora down to mid latitudes Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we've been kind of hovering around unsettled conditions. That is until the second we got hit by a small pocket of fast solar wind that bumped us up to active conditions for a short while and brought Aurora down to mid latitudes, if you can believe it or not. Didn't last long and before things began to quiet back down. And now we're kind of back to unsettled, almost even quiet conditions, but these aren't going to last because we're expecting another small pocket of fast wind here over the next day or so. And then we're also expecting a solar storm to hit us right around the 11th. 
Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter moon phase, and by the 12th, the moon will be about 50% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A, it's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from the side. And what you can see is basically regions 2740 and 2741. They're the most monstrous things even in Stereo's view right now. And you can see how much real estate they take up, which means they're going to be bothering us here at Earth easily over the next 10 days, possibly even two weeks. The other thing though, is that when you look behind them, there's really not a lot going on. There's a few little bright regions, but they're not really kind of manifesting. They're kind of diving back below the sun's surface. So it looks like once we get past these regions, which will be, like I said, another two weeks or so, then we might actually get a week respite where things will finally quiet down. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating a small pocket of fast solar wind followed by that big Earth-directed solar storm. So this is going to be an active week for us, folks. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting storm conditions, especially right around the 11th, with a really good chance of a major storm. At mid-latitudes, NOAA is only expecting active conditions with a small possibility of a minor storm, and this could bring aurora down to mid-latitudes latitudes for a short while. So we should expect storming in through the weekend and then things beginning to settle down as we move into next week. So your war photographers definitely keep your batteries charged. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We only have about a 5% chance of an M-class flare from regions 2740 and 2741. Mainly they've been popping off C-class flares, which can cause the amateur radio bands to be a bit noisy, but it doesn't cause radio blackouts. So this should make both amateur radio operators and GPS uh, users very happy. We don't have any really monstrous issues with solar flares right now. The nice thing though is that those two regions are definitely boosting the solar flux. It is not your eyes. You actually are seeing the high 70s here. This is great news for anyone who's trying to get radio propagation on Earth's day side. Enjoy these conditions. They will easily last over the next week, possibly even the next 10 days before things begin to calm down. And it's all thanks to these two big bright regions. Now, also because we are in solar minimum, we're getting more cosmic ray penetration than we normally would. So you frequent flyers, and this does include the air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So space weather this week has definitely kicked into high gear, and it's all thanks to regions 2740 and 2741 as they've rotated into Earth view. They've been rapid firing solar flares and solar storms, creating such a ruckus. And one of those solar storms is Earth directed. So you Aurora photographers, you're definitely going to have to stay on your toes and keep your batteries charged because you have a good chance of catching maybe the best solar storm that we've seen all year because of this solar minimum sun. Now, amateur radio operators, well, you guys are also enjoying life quite a bit because we've boosted the solar flux back up into the high 70s, almost 80s, which is unheard of for this time in the solar cycle. We should be enjoying some decent radio propagation on Earth's day side, and these conditions could easily continue over the next two weeks, even though you're going to get a little bit of noise on the bands from some of these low-class flares that have been firing. Now, as far as you GPS users, are concerned, well, the news for you guys isn't quite so wonderful. GPS reception shouldn't be too bad, but you could get a little bit of noise because of the small solar flares that have been firing, so definitely watch out on the dawn dust terminators. You could cause a little bit of interference for you. And then also because we have this solar storm that's going to be hitting right around the 11th, make sure you stay away from the aurora because you could definitely have uh, reception issues under those beautiful lights. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.